This week we're home on the range looking at Hank Sampson and the Survivor cards in the Hemlock Vale expansion. I'm Brandon. I'm Dial. I'm Steven. And this is Optimal Play. Fourth out of five videos all recorded in one marathon for us. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're gonna make it. <laughs> we're powering through. Uh, we're on what beer? Three? Seven? Twelve? Feel, feels like a lot. Cumulatively like, like seven or eight. Cheers. 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 Yeah. I yeah. took a sip before the cheers, now I have to sip again. Mm -hmm. Those That's are the rules. rules of cheers. If you're just joining us, we are, other than a few that we uh, either saw previews or previewed ourselves, we are largely taking our first ever looks at the cards sight unseen in the Hemlock Vale and uh, giving our takes on whether they seem fun, cool, weird, good, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, if you haven't liked the video yet, it's, we're like 90 seconds in, where have you been? Uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, that helps us out a lot. Kyle, we've, uh, I comment, made the comment with Wilson that we were getting an old investigator no one was asking for. I feel like that's maybe even truer with- Let's do Hank, round two. Hank Samson, the farmhand, uh, why don't you introduce us? I would love to introduce you to the farmhand, Hank is uh, starting stats are three willpower, one intellect, five combat, three agility. He's assistant and warden traded. Uh, his ability is you may be assigned damage and horror dealt to ally assets or other investigators at your location. Sweet, so I'm sure he has a lot of health and sanity to soak that up with. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah uh, five of each, in fact. Oh good. Five, five oh. health, five <laughs> sanity, lots. Lots, plenty. You know, I was saying with, uh, I think, Alessandra, how I like when they're evened out. Well, right? so, here you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Lower than Lola, we're, we're starting off very strong here. Um, he has a plus one uh, elder sign effect. That's it. Like, that's, that's the, uh, that's all the elder sign does is plus one. Really? He has it an has, old school, he has a corset style. Worse than a corset plus is it's usually variable on uh, <laughs> on something. It is just a plus one. It is as good as having a plus one token in the bag. All right. Uh, he has an optional reaction. Uh, again, this is optional. Uh, when you would be defeated by damage and or horror. <laughs> <laughs> it's not forced. It's, it's a reaction. <laughs> Instead, heal all of your damage and horror and swap this card with its bonded resolute version either side face up. All right, before we jump into that, that's, uh -huh. that's a lot, I know. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about his deck building. How, <laughs> how, do we, how do we build this guy's deck? All right, sure. Yep. Um, and, then, make sense. and then we'll yeah. get into the resolute. I, I just want to keep the suspense built. I think it's the deck building that will really make this all make Yeah, it'll sense. make sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, 35 card deck. Really? So, bigger than, oh, than I, you would expect. I had no idea. That... You know, less, less horror and damage soak, but bigger deck. So it, it evens out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, deck building options are survivor cards, any of them, neutral cards, any of them, and up to 10 other innate or spirit cards, level oh. 0 to 2. Okay. So uh, pretty, That's decent, pretty broad. decent yeah. broad yeah, um, uh, number of cards there. Uh, deck building requirements are uh, just his signatures and a basic weakness. <clears throat> Growing up on a farm, Hank Sampson did all the chores Mom and Pa told him to, including taking care of his brothers and sisters. When Pa showed him to the strange animals in the city stockyard, Hank felt uneasy, but he did what he was told. When Pa told him to wait, he waited, and when Pa didn't come back, Hank, <laughs> Hank went to find him. <laughs> pa told him, uh, taught him the, that family is everything, and you don't just leave family behind. Very, very touching. I guess. I mean, it's it's kind sounds of like sad. his father clearly <laughs> abandoned him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but family's everything, just like his father said, just like Pa. All right, so as I was saying before, <laughs> <laughs> the the bonded resolute version comes into play after Hank would be defeated by, by damage and or horror. Uh, one side of the resolute version is uh, three willpower, three intellect, four combat, four agility, pretty well-rounded, higher stats than normal mm -hmm. investigators. He's bonded to his original version, which is sure. interesting. <laughs> um, he can no longer be healed. 
and you may be assigned damage and horror dealt to ally assets or other investigators at your location. So same ability mm -hmm. as before. As a reaction, when one or more horror is placed on you, draw a card. Hmm. Uh, and his, his split in this version is four health and six sanity. Uh, now he has a more interesting Elder Sign, and it is uh, plus one uh, again. <laughs> but now, move one horror from Hank, Hank Samson to an al al ally... To an asset you control. There you are go. on your, you are a few beers we're, in. We're feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. You want to talk about that side and then we'll get into the next? Nope, nope. All right. The other side going. just has his deck building for the, this <laughs> version, right? Yeah. Uh, after you get defeated, you can change your deck. Uh, no. So the other side is a different stat lineup uh, falling further into the chaos of bloodshed as it comes into a four <laughs> willpower one intellect six combat a whopping six combat printed on investigator it's a lot of combat that's first time for everything yeah and then three agility uh same abilities um except this reaction is when uh one or more damage is placed on you gain two resources instead mm -hmm. of the draw card for the horror and then the elder sign effect is move one damage uh from him to an asset you control so wait how do you get to that side is it his third life no no, it is. You pick one of these oh, two sides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you so you can choose to be kind of like he kind of either becomes more well rounded than he was, mm -hmm. or less well rounded and goes even harder into combat. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not even less well rounded. He just gains an additional willpower and strength. Wow. That's it. That's pretty good. It is good. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a weird investigator. It's a weird enough scary. Yeah, super cool. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm into it. Yeah, I, I am into it too. Um, it's very interesting that we finally have the the tank who can die, which is very the interesting. tank who can die. Yeah, and I mean, as far as his, like, just... His, so his actual stats are, what, 9 and 11? His actual health and sanity, depending on which side you choose. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a, that's enough right there to actually do some tanking for other... Yeah. For yeah. other... And that's his and whole stuff. ability, so you yeah. might as well do that. Right. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of unfortunate that it's at your location, but that's how tanking's always worked. It's interesting that he has a larger deck size. I wonder why. Like, that's a considered a... Di that's a disadvantageous yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a... Well, I think it's to make up for the extra health. Like, I mean, I think it's it's because he has a bigger health pool. Right? But I mean, I would think to making up for the extra health is can't be healed. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, but there's so, things that like it's just transfer a, damage. That yeah, you can still I mean, do like yeah, it's, it's like it's hard. It's hard to look at this and be like, oh, that's there as a disadvantage to balance out that thing. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a real strange bundle of stats and abilities. Yeah. I mean, but remember that the can't be healed is only on the resolute side. So while they're yeah. in their initial form, five and five can be healed. Right. Right. So they're, but they're your can't... stats get better, and you get an actual ability once you tip over into your resolute side. So I you guess. don't really want to like just heal like crazy and be on your front side the whole game. I don't think. No, I, th I think the the front side you you probably try to do two thirds on front and then the rest on back. Is, mm. is kind of the feeling uh, that I'm getting. I I, mm. I would play it like Calvin, like just get the red line as quickly as possible. Really, it's kind of it's kind of really it's kind of more how I lean too. Yeah. Really, yeah. Like, because he turns into like Mark for horror. That's really like would, if you were playing Mark, do you want to like not be Mark for the first half of the scenario? <laughs> no, but re remember, Mark, Mark isn't Mark for the second half of the scenario. Right? <laughs> no, that's true. Once he flips Sophie, it is yeah. it's exactly it's, it's the reverse Mark. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I, the reason I'm saying that is because I think his ability is really the assigning damage and, and horror dealt to allies specifically, which I'm sure there's some sort of synergy there, and um, and other investigators. Well, I say we see what his signature is, because that might also inform how to play him. Let's find out. <laughs> Stout Hearted is his signature event, two-cost event uh, in his deck only. It's a fast event, play when you engage a non-elite enemy. Move up to hmm. two damage and or horror from Hank to that enemy as damage. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah horror, horror becomes damage because enemies don't care about horror. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, that's... I, I mean, mean, it lets him heal. Like, yeah. Even on the... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, as an event that you can play once most games, it's, yeah. like, not that impactful a part of his kit, I don't think, but... No. Uh, but, but it's it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's gonna be it's powerful. I think best on his resolute side, right? Where you're getting yeah. the max you out of that. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and then, <laughs> God, the weakness is, where's Pa? <laughs> Which is his flaw, is his weakness flaw. Revelation, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. Attach where's Paw to that enemy and spawn it at a connecting location, if able. Does Paw become a creature? Is that what happens? Did he turn into a zoo weird animal and now he don't? What? I don't know. Yeah, uh, and then the attached enemy gains elusive as well. Oh, so it runs so, away. We looked that up. Hey, what is elusive? Since mean? in both of our first two videos, we didn't know what that did. Uh, <laughs> it means after it is attacked or evaded, it moves the space away from investigators. It's after it attacks or it is attacked, right? Yes, I think. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> Your beer's not getting to you at all, either. <laughs> no, not, not even a little. Um, and then Force, at the end of the round, Hank Samson takes one direct horror. Oof. Yeah. Which okay. which means, means that, like, if you don't see this by the time you hit Resolute, maybe you go into the well-rounded Resolute because it has more horror to soak. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's funny because it doesn't... Um, push you like i'm not sure what deck to build for him and maybe that's cool because he's got sort of a, almost a pretty generic like ability his, like his a, stats he, are not generic he, 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 has, he has the option to have very high combat yeah, yeah. uh and doesn't really have a, a it's not like if he goes with the sanity side his intellect improves but from one to three yeah. so he doesn't become an all-star no book guy <laughs> well done <laughs> <laughs> yes his intellect is not anything but stellar <laughs> What's the uh, guardian card that you get to transfer damage or horror? It's um, solemn vow. Solemn vow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that think, he can I, take that, right? I think he, yeah, it's spirit traded, so yeah. he can take that, and I think he does very, very really. Like I feel like that's almost a waste on him because he has the built-in ability to, as long as he's in the same place, take that damage or horror in the first place for them. So oh, oh, oh I see. I feel like why would you waste? Because it lets you put that. it on Peter and Jessica, which he's almost certainly playing. Well. You, oh, you take right. the transfer off of yeah. other people. Yeah. I gotcha. And then I'm thinking you build a bottom bros deck, him and Mark, <laughs> and they both just like take damage and pass it off to each other for card draw. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. So they both take Solemn Vow. They yeah. both play it on each back other. Back and forth forever. And then back and forth forever just giving each other damage <laughs> so that they can draw cards or gain resources. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, I like it. Let's play it. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like, uh, I mean, yeah, it also would be great if the partner ran Solemn Vow for Hank's other side, which yeah. can't be healed because you can still shuttle damage off them. I've never thought about multiple people running copies of Solemn Vow. You have to, like, track who controls which ones. <laughs> oh, card, card sleeve. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the red cards. Let's do it. Uh, starting with Matchbox, a one-cost survivor asset that's an item and a tool, uh, uses three supplies. If Matchbox has no supplies, discard it. Uh, during any investigator's turn, exhaust Matchbox and spend one supply. Your location gets minus one shroud until the end of this turn. It's a free trigger action. Yes, yeah. Uh, that seems pretty good. It, it really seems to play more into, uh, like, the... Um, zero shroud yeah. kind of uh, approach than it does into honestly any of the people in this box who could use it because it's a tool or because <laughs> it's a survivor card. But here's why it's good in him is that like a card that increased his intellect by one or two would be worthless, right? Because mm. he's so bad. Yeah. But this yeah. is at least something where he can contribute something to investigation. Yeah, he's still, unless it's a one shroud location in the first place, he's still probably not investigating. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's doing that someone else's thing. Can he, um, can he, can he this, this combo is... this with other, like, flashlights or lanterns or anything like Absolutely that? Absolutely could, and this notably uh, does not take up a slot. Mm. Right, this is a slotless card, which is always something that's potentially pretty good then. Yeah. Um, it's also, it's combos with, t like, action increases, so that car, the delay to action card that we um, mm. reviewed in an earlier, it's a neutral, yeah, that we reviewed uh, in an earlier video. Bide your time, I think. Yeah, yeah. like, it's good with that, because it's minus one trap for five actions. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, stu sure. stuff like this is very good with uh, with extra actions, and that's a, a neutral way to get them. Um, yeah, I'm sure this will see play. It's, like, it's kind of just a generically pretty good like not not a really exciting thing feels great in yeah. uh what's the photographer daryl it's incredible yeah yep yep it's great in him. 
Whoa, uh, null costed asset. You're reading us? Yeah, pelt shipment. Uh, item and supply. While pelt shipment is in your hand, your maximum hand size size is reduced by three. Was this supposed to be a weakness? <laughs> <laughs> uh, reaction. When the game ends or you resign, if pelt shipment is in your hand, reduce the experience cost of the next new card you purchase before the next scenario by one. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it's a new Delph 2D. <laughs> I like it. Me it's too. interesting because you don't want them both. Right? If you have two of these in your hand... Sure, it's great that your next card is reduced by two, but they are your hand. Your hand size becomes two, and then you have two hell shipments. <laughs> Whoa. I like that it's like in the video game when you just got a bunch of loot, but like you're now like you can't run anymore. You're, you're, now, like, yeah, you're yeah. ripping back to the town, <laughs> but you're like, oh, if I can make it back, I can sell all this loot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's I great. mean, I guess that's the flavor of what you're doing, right? Is like in addition to uh, fighting and surviving the yeah. mythos, you're like carrying this bag of pelts from <laughs> trading post to trading post. <laughs> is, is this an asset? Uh, it is an mm. asset, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's not going to mm. interplay. Why is that rude? Uh, because if it were an event, it is supply traded, which means it could be tucked under, uh, oh. stick to the plan. Oh, but <laughs> hold on. It's actually good that it's an item because if you get this, you can just chuck it for hand size and then scavenge it back on the last mm. turn. If you pay mm. extra experience you pay extra for extra taboo scavenge. scavenge. But yeah. you'll get the XP back. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this is this is the reason the scavenging on taboo. That's actually kind of a that's kind that's of a, a, a good argument. point. That yeah, dis discard it now, uh, scavenge it back in the late game. Uh, I'm yeah, that's that's a pretty good idea. All right, <laughs> I'm told. That's really cool. It I also like, I like this a lot. Also, oh my god, I just thought of another great one. Um, scrounge for supplies now can get some extra play. Mm. Scrounge for supplies mm. is that's, kind of a slept on. It's yeah. like the return of level zero the card. Return yeah. is a level zero as an action. Yeah, so that's another way you can get it back. Yeah, and then if you have an extra resourceful at the end of the game, which you probably won't, because it's an amazing card. Yeah, but if you have an extra, why would you be sitting on a resourceful? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. Resourceful we'll gave it back to. It. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I'm thinking that you can probably game this so you pull them in back into your hand in the end of the game. I like it. Yeah, yeah, and then you would just need to, well, you either discard it to hand size or uh, you discard it for some other survivor card effect because it doesn't, there's no way inherently to get into your discard pile. Yeah. Uh, next up is Pitchfork, a three cost asset. It's a two handed um, item, tool, weapon, and melee traded card. Uh, as an action fight, you get plus one combat and deal plus two damage for this attack. If this attack is successful, lose control of Pitchfork and attach it to your location. Your location gains. Take control of Pitchfork. Any investigator at Pitchfork's location may trigger this ability. So anyone can go there and pick it back up. Mm. <sighs> so if I were an indie music review site, I would give this like a 7.5. Yeah? You don't remember Pitchfork? No. Is that, it's, a, it's a music review I website. figured you were making some joke about the name, uh, but I didn't get it. You're not yeah. enough of a hipster. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'll work on it. <laughs> um, this is fine. It's fine. I've always liked, in theory, the survivor weapon design where they have some, like, downside or they can break or that kind of thing, but then so often it just is so... makes the card bad. And I'm worried that this does too. I kind of think you could make the fight ability... Given that you have to pick it up again after every time you use it successfully, I feel like its uh, ability could... It's like boost and damage could be one higher? Well, the boost is one higher with Wilson, so... That's true. That oh, true. Wilson can use the pitchfork, yeah. Um, hmm, interesting. I think as a guardian, he's got to be able to do better than this, though. <laughs> yeah. But I guess most of the, probably most of the cards that are tool and weapon traded are survivor cards. Yeah. <laughs> if I were to guess. Yeah. Um, so, like, if it's basically, action economy-wise, it's like the fight is a double action. It's not quite, it's a little better than that, I think because you can split up those actions even yeah. to other turns. Uh, you, or you could look at it as a little worse, because if you get forced off of a location or something, then it's, mm. <laughs> it's gone for good. Yeah. But uh, two actions for plus one combat, plus two damage. The plus one combat is actually the scariest part of that. So I like, mean, for Hank, he doesn't need much more than that. No, no, for <laughs> Hank, you're right. But, but for any other survivor person wielding this, if they're, like, attacking off, an enemy so right. engaged with. It's like, you can miss pretty easily and that's three damage. It's, uh, it's a little scary. It is nice that like 
if for some reason your main fighter hasn't found their weapon yet that like if you're a flex you can use this do three damage and then your main fighter can pick it up and like finish off the enemy mm. yeah if they have no uh i mean there's something to that that like you know someone who doesn't have in the early game in particular someone who doesn't have their hand slots full can spend their action picking it up and helping uh but for the most part the two hands thing makes the in theory ability to pass it around your team like pretty rough yeah I kind of wish, and maybe they still will someday or have in this box, but I kind of wish that they had used this mechanic on, like, a ranged weapon if it could, like, attack an enemy one space away but then land it in that location needing to be picked up. A I think, javelin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that would be a really cool use of this premise. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you just have to pick it up from your own location in almost all cases uh, just kind of makes it really similar to a double action card. Uh, one thing I will say is, remember we were talking about Wilson's signature. This is a, mm -hmm. an excellent target for that signature. Which signature is signature card that lets you uh, discard a card for its ability when you use the attach card? Yeah, so when you use Why an attached is... tool, like let's say you're, you're oh. doing a fingerprint kit, you discard Pitchfork and use that ability on Pitchfork. To oh. attack for and three this, damage. And then this goes to that to location from your discard? Oh, if this attack is successful, well, it says lose control of it and attach it, but you never had control of it. I don't know. If you if you discard this for its fight ability, does it end up on your location able to be picked up again? That's not what my intent oh. for it was. It was just a, a quick, like, little three damage discard. Yeah, it seems right. great. But it does seem like possible? It's possible. It's like yeah. it be in the FAQ. I don't yeah. know it is. I don't know. I don't either. remember reading that in the FAQ, so. Yeah, because in that way, you're essentially playing it for free. Yeah, because yeah, it also right. doesn't it doesn't say lose control and then attach it. So like, normally they say right. use then, then if it's a requirement. Then means it's a requirement. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I feel like I need to ping Nick on that. Yeah, and then uh, I was wondering if this is if this was the card that uh, his what was the name of the his signature? It's not jury rigged, but it's something like along that. those lines. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if that could also, tri if it was on this, if you could trigger and play some other card when you picked it up. But it says the location gains that ability. So mm -hmm. you're not using an action on this when you pick it up. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it, it seems great for that purpose. Um, also, there there is that <laughs> the survivor card that I still have not gotten to in a deck, uh, which is Jury Ring, I think. It's like it's an upgrade mm -hmm. attachment. Yeah. Yeah. It's like zero and fast. It's like really easy to get on something. Um, and it just gives you a plus two skill boost while using the tool. And I feel like that's a perfect reason to get like, yeah, that really solidifies the combat. Right. And someone who's not a fighter could pick it up and with plus three really reliably hit for three damage. So, yeah, and I think that I think that, that works. If you have an attachment on this, mm -hmm. some kind of upgrade to it, then this is, is this the first time it's possible for there to be an attachment attached to a card that is then attached to another card? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> as I far like as I it. know, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I also, I think if you're playing with the Tony, it becomes a little better too, because Tony has so many actions that he doesn't really mind having to pick this up a lot. That's mm -hmm. true. He can't take it though, can he? Yeah, he takes oh, it. Oh, you, you, you're, you're, you're playing, you along, you're you're playing alongside of Tony. <laughs> yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? All right. Uh, Sparrow Mask, the Wanderer's Companion. Mm -hmm. One cost asset, will and agility, item charm and mask, limit one mask, uh, two offerings, replenish one of these after you take one or more damage and or horror. Hmm. And then you can spend an offering to boost two will or two agility. Like all the masks, seems great. Agreed. <laughs> these, these things I think are just really tuned to be very, very powerful. Yeah, the only thing, like maybe this isn't quite the most ubiquitous one because there are some survivors that maybe don't take damage and horror every turn. Whereas yeah. I feel like some of the other masks you basically get every single turn. Yeah, well, I don't know that that's necessarily true. Leaving a location with an enemy or even engaging an enemy. Uh, it's not I guess necessarily the every Guardian and, and Seeker one seemed like they were like... What was so the Seeker so trigger again? Oh, it was like... Uh, re uh, revealing uh, reveal location. location. See, I don't that, even think that, that, that's, that's not that's consistent rare, either. Rare, actually. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the one thing but, to say about this is that it's defensive stats only. Yeah, that, I do think that these are the least appealing stats because they are the more situational, the willpower and agility. Mm -hmm. But I still think the masks are, are fine if you don't replenish them at all yeah. and great if you replenish them even a couple times. So I think that this one will be really good too. Yep, I agree. Uh, elaborate Distraction is the three-cost survivor event. 
Uh, it's a trick and a double. As an additional cost to play elaborate distraction, spend an action. Uh, playing it does not provoke attacks of opportunity. For each enemy at your location and each connecting location, you can choose one. Or I guess it's not, I guess it's, anyway, I'll finish reading. Automatically evade that enemy if it's not elite or deal one damage to that enemy. Uh, is it choose per enemy? Yeah. Or make one choice that happens to them all? It's per enemy. Yeah, for each enemy. Yeah. If you say so. I think so. It says in per... I don't know why the choose one is in parentheses then. I feel like it's like, choose the end of the sentence, and then the, and then the sentence would be applying the same effect to all enemies. I but feel like you're making it more complicated. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Um, this seems like an awesome read if I were to. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then she gets both. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they'd end deal. Boy. Well, only once. Three resources a card and two actions, though. It's a pricey card. Yeah. Right, like this is. Um, you can't play this in like less than three player. Probably. This is. Is it cunning distraction? What's the card cunning, with the art? Is you like throwing throwing a turkey yeah. and it automatically evades all enemies? Like it's very comparable to that in cost, and that mm -hmm. is a card that no one plays because it's too expensive. <laughs> and so, this is its effect is a little stronger, but I still wonder if it falls into the same page of the binder. <laughs> yeah, it may. I feel like in three or four player, I would definitely consider this. Yeah, yeah. When when there's plentiful enemies, but yeah, I agree. In two player or less, it's not gonna hit the table. Hmm. Okay. All right. Push to the limit. Two cost events. Mm -hmm. Will and fight. Uh, tactic and improvised. Choose a weapon or tool asset in your discard pile. Resolve a action ability on that asset, ignoring all costs. Hmm. After this effect resolves, shuffle the chosen asset into your deck. Ooh. Playing this card does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Now we're talking. That's cool. So now your pitch break can go from the discard to a location to yeah. your deck all in one action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I guess it gets attached to the location and then immediately <laughs> yeah. you you shuffle into your deck. deck. I mean, this seems to combo well with Wilson and his uh, signature that lets you discard cards yep. for, to get their effect for free once, and then you can get their effect again this way and shuffle it back in. And he can take improvised cards, right? He can take impro improvised cards. I'm wondering, he can't take Survivor naturally, though, anyway, right? No. Yeah. I was going to say, the, yeah. uh, the other one that would be really nice is the, the charm that can get discarded. Oh, Moonstone? Moonstone, yeah, just to give him some extra stats. <laughs> right, right. Uh, hmm. I mean, the the problem with this card is that it's like a two two resources and a, a card and an action to probably do like two or three damage. And like, yeah, to do an ability of a card once. Um, mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I, like, can be okay. Like, um, you know, there's like the Mystic spell that does two or three damage that I guess gets played a decent amount. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's decent, but it doesn't feel like super I like that awesome. it doesn't provoke. I think that's helpful. Um, I, I think in a uh, post-scavenging uh, taboo world, this is another way to recur tools and weapons. It's true. For zero, call, or for zero XP. Yeah, raising the price of scavenging adds a little bit more space for other things like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, yeah, you would just scavenge to get that weapon back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over. I guess I don't... I, I'm not thinking of the shuffle as a particularly impactful part of this. Like you're, you're, you're right. I feel like the two or three damage is the main yeah. thing. Um, uh, and let, maybe yeah. if it's like a four XP item, then the reshuffle is, is valuable. Yeah, I think, like, is this it's pretty com comparable to, like, Active Desperation, right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's different, because that one you can throw <laughs> something from in play and you get a, a refund of its cost, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there's a little more going on. But it's just, yeah, it's like using... No, you're right. I guess it's not that comparable. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, I was thinking of other Survivor damage events, mm -hmm. uh, which the Survivor doesn't have a lot of. Mm -hmm. And this is not on its face a damage event, but you're, I agree that you'd almost always be choosing a weapon here for the damage. I mean, I think um, I, I did actually look up a few tools while you were out walking dogs, <laughs> and one that I kind of forgot that was a tool is Chainsaw as a tool. Oh, that's fun. So, like, this with Chainsaw is, like, you use all three supplies, you discard it to play a different weapon, yeah. then you you know, use it from the discard pile and get it back into your deck. That, uh, that feels pretty nice. I've been in the mood for some chainsawing lately. It's also a weapon. Yeah. I don't know why I fixated on the tool part. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I've been playing Helldivers 2 and the robots, the enemies in that have chainsaws. And I'm mm. like, I want a chainsaw. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 
and play Hank with a chainsaw. All right, that's, chain, that's an option. Chainsaw Hank. Uh, <laughs> that's that's my gonna be my Hemlock Vale deck now. All right. Uh, stall for time. This is a one cost event. Will and book tactic and trick, and it's got uh, Patrice on the art. Yeah, Patrice. That's an investigator I haven't thought about for a while. She's I was just great. thinking about her because thirty five card deck size. Oh, she's forty two. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. I Multiple. Know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, imagine my mind if I didn't just store all this art. I'm like, I'm like reciting card names. <laughs> You'd be like writing award-winning poetry. Yeah, or, Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Uh, parlay. Choose an enemy at location. Test will for X, where X is the chosen enemy's fight or evade value, whichever is lower. If you succeed, exhaust the chosen enemy, but do not disengage from it. If it is non-elite, it is not ready during the next upkeep phase. If you mm. fail, return stall for time to your hand. Hmm. Hmm. That's fun that it's not a waste if you fail. Other than the action and resource. Yeah, other than those things. But who's <laughs> counting? <laughs> All right, you got. You get one third of the things you spent on it back if you fail. <laughs> If you're, uh, what's her name? Stella, and it's the first, uh, fail of the round, you actually get two of the three. Yeah. Ironically, I feel like, um, the returning it to your hand if you fail sucks for Patrice. Sucks. Patrice. Pictured on this card, because she's about to discard oh, it. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess well, you can do it in your next Do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But then that's at the, uh, opportunity cost of using the other cards that she's about to lose. Uh, that's fine. A yeah. two, a two turn, uh, enemy lockdown is pretty good. But it's like... Oh, that's interesting. I only just kind of grokked the parenthetical. Uh, exhaust the chosen enemy, but do not engage, disengage from it. Yeah. yeah. So you still have... So for the next two turns, the, for this round and the next round, it would just be attached to you exhausted? Yeah. Yeah. So like you, have to, you still have to deal with it at some point. Yeah. I mean, it's good with that other card that evades every enemy, I guess. Like you lock it down for a couple turns. Go and somewhere then... with more enemies. And... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or just gives buys time, I mean, as is in the yeah. name of the card, buys time for a guardian or guardian role character to swoop in yeah. and kill it. I feel like if yeah. I was Patrice, I'd rather just play, like, Mists of Riley to, like, evade with willpower. Yeah. And I can't see playing this in anyone but Patrice. Really? Yeah. Mm. I, I, think this, I think this exists in a heavy investigator-type role where stalling for the time for the Guardian to come kill it is a great use. Yeah. It's like, one action, a resource, you lock it down for a couple turns, you can go around doing what you want to do, not provoking attacks, but like, and so then the Guardian will get to it But eventually. who are the survivors that are, like, super all in and investigate? Like, it's mostly Daryl. And is his will even any good? I don't think it was. Doubt it. Don't no, but, but other people take survivor cards. The answer here is probably that it's an Alessandro with fine clothes card and probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As but, with most of the parlay yeah. cards in this box. I think Min could take it. Min would like this. Uh, but Min has sure. better things she could be doing. Yeah, probably. You're right. Like but like, you know, I, she I has see it poor agility. Yeah. Uh next yep. up is Wait, but if you have agility, then the card's bad. It says she has poor oh, agility. Oh, poor agility. Oh, he said four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrong place, right time is up. It's a zero-cost event. It's got good icons with a wild oh. and a will and agility. And then um, it's spirit and double-traded, so it costs an additional action to play. Move up to five damage and or horror from your investigator to assets controlled by investigators at your location. For each asset defeated by this effect, draw one card. Remove wrong place, right time from the game. That part feels right. I don't know why it's here. No, it feels wrong. It feels right. It feels this wrong. This card seems super strong. So strong. And if you could keep doing this, yeah. it'd be like you, again, pretty broken. The, yeah, but Red you, is recursion forever. Like It's not recursion forever, though. It's an event. It's like they can scrounge for supplies. or like They're, they're recursion for this as well. I 100% yeah, see I why they did this. I totally understand why they did this. If five mm. damage and or horror from your investigator to cards you control or anyone controls... That seems amazing. Because, like, think about it. Like, let's say that you're playing some big rig. I have tons of assets. Mm -hmm. That means that your deck is really small. You now, like, defeat a few of them. You draw a bunch of cards. So you're, like, shuffling this very small deck back in. Um, so, you, like, you don't even need recursion. You just need to have, like, 15 assets out. And then you, like, reshuffle, <laughs> like, a 10-card discard. <laughs> yeah, but spending two-thirds of your turn every time you play it... 
Uh, like, that damage is still going somewhere. It's not a 5 heal. Like, I don't know. I'm not buying it being that strong. I think you put, like, some of it on, like, Pete and Jessica. And sure. And you also, yeah. like, defeat some, like, fairly low-value assets like sure. Josh Keepsake and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I mean, I think the only person who takes this is Hank, and it's incredible for him. Is the way. Do you I don't feel. think Calvin yeah. would consider this? No. <laughs> <laughs> we already covered this. Yeah. Calvin, Kyle is Calvin. not not about moving damage and horror no. off. Of Calvin. Calvin is best with all the damage and horror. Yeah. <laughs> you get all the canceling, not the healing for Calvin. Right. Like, hmm. I don't know. I like this card. Yeah. I guess you can combo it with things, oh, or send, about, you know, send it to your Carolyn player or whatever. Tommy but... plays this, right? Because you like, you oh, like Tommy defeating your assets, yes. Yes. getting money and cards now. Yeah. Like Tommy, one hundred percent runs that card. Yeah, um, the Although, thing with Tommy, Tommy is though, sucks. why why would he have damage and horror on him? <laughs> right, he's putting it on those assets in the first place. You yeah. put it on him now so that you get to defeat your assets at, at and the get right cards. time. <laughs> get cards. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you two are overrating this. I think it's very good, especially for Hank, whose ability is also about taking horror and damage. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it should probably go in his Mark. Way. Mark maybe takes it to heal up from Sophie. Can you take it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he can take spirit cards. I think cards. he can only take tactics. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's tactic. That's what he can take. I was like, it was one trait that he could take. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, long shot is a skill card with no skill icons. Great. Love uh, that. Seems, seems good so far. Yeah. <laughs> Practiced. You may commit long shot to a fight or evasion test against an enemy or location or a connecting location. Um, if the test is successful, deal one damage to that enemy. This deck has, or this set has so many vicious blows. <laughs> True. Wait, what? That is absurd. Yeah, but it doesn't help you pass the test, but it yeah. adds a damage to the test, whether it's a fight or an evade. Evade, though. And it works uh, at a connecting location. A connecting location evade? Yeah. What? <laughs> but, yeah. like, someone else has to be in that location and evade like, it doesn't if, let you evade. Oh, oh, course. that's what I was confused yeah, about. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm so no. confused. Uh, if you're taking red cards with Carson, it seems like a no-brainer. Very very good for him to support uh, nearby players. Yep. Um, let's Rita do two damage with an evade. It's fun. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this is a really good card. And again, um, really good card. Maybe better than uh, these damaging skill cards should be. With uh, was it strong armed? What was the other one that we were comparing to vicious blow from? Oh, that uh, was so, yeah. it was a one experience one though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this one's zero. Yeah, it's nuts. There's like you can put with some some investigators now. You can have at least six plus one damage skill cards in your deck. Oh. <laughs> Seems good. This is yeah. a fantastic uh, min card as well. Yeah, it is. Like, oh sure, yeah. stack pack min. Yep. Throwing it from across the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. Uh, speaking of throwing, I'm just assuming that this is thrown because it's a uh, hatchet. <laughs> Two cost, level one survivor asset. That's an item, tool, weapon, range, and it takes up one hand slot. As an action fight, uh, add your agility to your skill value for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage. If this attack defeats an enemy, discard hatchet. Otherwise, lose control of hatchet and attach it to the attacked enemy. In the attacked enemy gains... When attached enemy is defeated, take control of Hatchet. Any investigator at Hatchet's location may trigger this ability. And that was a, a, reaction. a reaction, yeah, so not an action cost like the Pitchfork. Is this meant to, like, combo with Pitchfork? You get your first blow in with the Hatchet, then pick up the Pitchfork and finish it off? Something like that? Like, what's going on here? Um, it's just, it's one that you don't want to kill them. Yeah, with? the Hatchet, like, breaks if it defeats an enemy. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to defeat an enemy. Um, so it's also, it's good with um, the butcher uh, uh, knife, because that one you want to defeat enemies with mm. to get your meat core. cleaver. Oh, meat cleaver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, good with, like, beat cop to just finish them off. Um, like, I, f I feel like this is a solid Wilson card. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see a place for this. It, it, this combined with testless damage, or just uh, another thing that doesn't take up a hand slot, but can't, you know, even like Garrote Wire, if you can take both of those, both this card and that card. Uh, so some other nearly guaranteed way to do the rest of the damage to an enemy, and then it's a freebie to pick it back, right back up. Uh, it seems really good. Yeah, the, the risk, I mean, I guess 
Well, I guess you're not really risking. You're not really risking discarding it because you just wouldn't make the attack. Yeah. But the chance that you find yourself in a situation where, like, oh, I don't have a good way to deal with this anyway, any enemy because I have a hatchet that I don't want to discard. Seems weird. It's interesting. I mean, I feel like the fact that we have this now archetype of like losing control of your weapon, picking it back up, it's it's an interesting rotating hand slots. This one though, with one hand slot, makes it much more versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the by far the most brutal thing about pitchfork is yeah. the two hand slots. Yeah. And then this can go can also be picked up by anyone mm-hmm. for what that's worth. And they they would add their agility to their attack value and if they happen to find that useful, then I mean so uh, Kate can pick it up and just murder people. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she'd be pretty good with the hatchet. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. But she, uh, or, uh, Wilson actually would have a decent skill value with the hatchet. He'd be at yeah. seven. Base. Uh, true. Three plus three and a plus, plus one, one from, from a tool. It's yeah. a tool. Yeah. I think great, great Wilson card. card. I mean, yeah, I think that's probably what these are for. Uh, they're just, yeah. they're just odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, persistence. One XP skill card with a wild, innate. You may commit persistence to a skill card from your discard pile. If you do, shuffle it into your deck after the test ends. But, but it's just it's just one will, wild or one will one wild. Yeah, do a skill test from your discard. Pile. Yeah, so you can use it twice, and it ends up shuffled back into your deck. Use it once from your hand oh. on a future test. Use it again from your discard pile. Got it. And then it's shuffled into your deck. Seems great. I like it actually. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's fun. It's if nothing fun. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, the, a, a one wild icon that you can use a few times is like, it's, it's not splashy. Yeah, it's, I feel like compared to like Ooh. winging it from the discard, it seems a little bit underpowered to me. Mm. Anyone but a stolid farmer would have fainted or gone mad from the color out of space. Uh, I just checked because I was like, have we been forgetting to read flavor text? Uh, this is the first flavor text on any red card. <laughs> <laughs> um, Silas really likes it? He you can say that about every skill He card. can play it, it goes to the discard pile, he can play it from his discard pile, and then from there he can pull it back to hand. Because it wouldn't be committed to the test when the test is resolved. The payoff is so low, though, having a one icon card back, that I feel like he'd rather use his recovery on other things. I mean, yeah, but sometimes he doesn't have a good target. Yeah. And it's like card draw for him, in a way. Yeah, but like this is an XP card and everything, uh, I don't know. Silas is just amazing. He can turn any decent card into a great card. (laughs) Ooh, uh, devil, quote-unquote. Friend or foe. A one-cost survivor asset. It's level two. It's an ally creature and cursed traded. Uh, This is kind of funny that this is, like, cursed traded because some investigate, like, Kohaku can take this even though it has nothing to do with curses. Uh, Yeah. Uh, But anyway, uh, it's a three-health ally slot. Forced, when your turn begins, move one damage from your investigator to devil. And forced, when devil is defeated, deal two damage to each enemy and investigator at your location. So it's like a ticking time bomb. that It heals you for three, but then will deal two to you again. Um, it, huh. Hmm. Or uh, maybe more likely, maybe what you would try to do, rather than be in the right place when the third round goes by is have him take damage from an enemy attack or something to detonate more at will. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, um, I think it's bad. I think it's great. Think really? It's good. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, it moves damage off of uh, the farmhand. Mm-hmm. Um, second, uh, it lets you do a big explosion, and that's fun. Um and you can use that card that evades an enemy and drags him around to uh, set up. Stall for time. That, that's fun. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty fun. Stall for time. Play devil and stall for time until it blows up. That's that, I love that. I like that combo a lot. That's very funny. Um, and like uh, what I expected you to say is that well, you can move damage off of Hank, and then when this deals damage back to Hank, put it on uh, Jessica and, and stuff. But this is an ally slot. So you're not going to have both of those in play. Oh, no, no, but he has... He, he, he definitely plays rides Prisma. Prisma. <laughs> yeah. Prisma. But still, so all of a sudden you're at 5 XP <laughs> to, to even have one of them in play. Uh, plus their XP cards. All of a sudden this is like, this card is kind of the core of what you've spent all your XP on? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's an exploding goat. I would totally build a deck around an exploding goat. 100% theme and fun factor yes. is 
off the charts. I think this is a card. Oh, and especially the flavor text, which I don't think I read, that says, I will guide thy hand. <laughs> like, oh, what horror movie is it with, like, not that long ago with the um, black goats and the farm girls? Oh, Midsummer? Uh, no. Was, uh, there was another kind of witch and black goat demon um, themed horror movie boy yeah. i don't know if it'll come to me in a minute or there not. was like the vivich or whatever um we always quote it because it, it uh the goat like would whisper to the girl like wouldst thou like to live deliciously wouldst <laughs> thou like the taste of butter like that's just a funny quote that we say all the time um and now i can't i can't think of the movie let us know in the comments what movie i'm quoting yeah <laughs> anyway i absolutely think that this was like based on the setting of hemlock veil vale and everything this was like we want to make a card that's the demon goat yeah <laughs> and that's no, how it's great it. it's yeah. great uh i agree i think it's, it's gonna be the timing of it is the only thing i don't like because you have to you have to be really planning this a couple turns in advance yeah <laughs> which well, feels you, tough you can stall it with cards like song though so hmm that's interesting yeah or you can move cards yeah you damage off of the go that's interesting i didn't think of that um tommy can play this right and it's a one cost that then refunds three yep. that's yeah pretty, that's pretty cool yeah yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah he can take up to two level two reds yeah yeah all right all right fire axe <gasps> level two one cost two fist icons item weapon and melee it's fast now mm. uh yeah as an action fight if you have no resources in your resource pool this attack deals plus one damage and as a uh, fast action, during an attack using Fire Axe, spend a resource, you get plus two fight, limit three times per attack. Huh. I think it's like... Is it just like a little cheaper and fast yep. than the original? It's the yeah. same cost and fast. I feel like they could have added the tool trait while they were at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that would be fine. No one would question this being considered a tool. <laughs> yeah. Fire Axe. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I never really felt like the problem with Fire Axe builds was that they weren't fast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, if you are playing a Fire Axe-centric deck, which I feel like was a big deal three cycles in, and I have not seen anyone try that in quite a while, but mm -hmm. if you were, you'd probably spend the two experience to upgrade this. Well, like, but, one of the big Fire Axe decks was, like, Preston, and he's got, like, I feel like tons of actions and tons of things to use XP on, so I can't imagine this ever being yeah. worth his XP. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... Is, is that the... Is is two experience fast? Is that is that what the the zeitgeist has determined? Uh, yeah, it's not super consistent. Whether like I, I think it, back in the course of days, it seemed really clear that like each XP kind of saved you an action or a resource, and I think it's a little more all over the place lately. Uh, yeah, I think if I was playing Fire Axe deck, I would probably find the XP to upgrade this, but it's. A pretty, little, pretty it's, a, it's, it's a little annoying that it's using up a card slot in box nine, like cycle nine of this game. I also, like, I don't like that I'm spending four XP to upgrade both of my fire axes, but it only matters for the first one I draw. Like, yeah. the second, I mean, I guess well, it's an extra icon. Other extra icon. Yeah, one. I guess that's where the other but, XP yeah, came from. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. I think that's a, it's a pass for me. I would did you read Fire Axe? Yeah. Oh, wow. Then I'll read Hunting Jacket. Uh, it's a two-cost level two survivor asset. It's an item and clothing. And it has... Uh, oh, and it takes up a body slot. Uh, as a fast ability, Exhaust Hunting Jacket. Choose one non-weakness card in your hand and attach it face down to Hunting Jacket. Max three cards attached. Then gain one resource for each attached card. And when Hunting Jacket is defeated, draw each attached card. That's cool. That this seems is, great. And this is a great asset to do things like move your damage and horror to with wrong place, wrong time. Because you, ult you ultimately want it to be defeated once you're ready for it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, once, once you have three cards on it. I think this card's excellent. Yeah. It's it, it actually also increases your hand size in a way. Like if you draw... Oh, it's great yeah. with that card that you... The pelts. Can't you just yeah. put the pelts on it? That's exactly what it's meant for. Yeah, you can uh, wear the pelts yeah. as a hunting jacket. <laughs> but you have to make sure that the hunting jacket gets defeated before the end of the game. Otherwise, right. they won't be in your hand at the end. Yes, yeah, you need, you need yeah. to get them back that way. Um, mm. Totally. So you can spend XP to manage your XP gaining card. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was going to say that... Um, uh, Lonnie Ritter could fix this, right? Isn't she the mechanic who fixes clothes? Yes, she's the mechanic. Uh, but you don't even really want to fix this. You ultimately yeah. want it to die before too long. Yeah. Um, 
And it's stacked. So it's, is it six, uh, six resources? You would get six resources total over, over the course the of, of three of rounds. Putting three cards under it, yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good investment, if nothing less. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's uh, it's got a lot of niche uses, and it's nice. Yeah, I guess that that is the main... I guess I don't think... Because, like, it's a two-cost, six-resource card at level two. Like, I don't think it's a great econ card. I guess it does soak two and two in the process. Mm -hmm. But I think managing the pelts is definitely the most yeah. interesting. And, and it's... Yeah, it's some soak. It's some, like, hand management. Like, pelt is the best one, but I, there's yeah. other cards that, like, you're like... I don't need this yet. Yeah. It clearly goes great with wrong place, wrong time if you're playing that. That you can move yeah. move all your damage and horror to it, uh, defeat it, drawing a card from wrong place one time, and getting all these back after you've gained those resources. Like Does that's Patrice it. run this? This feels like a Patrice card. Oh shit. Oh, you're right. She can bank cards for later. Yeah. Wow. Who would have thought the violinist would want to hunt a jacket <laughs> so much? But uh, yeah, that's really that's cool. That's a for really Patrice. nice one for her. Yeah. And also, like, if you do end up tucking, if you had two moonstones under this, you could just say, I don't want to trigger the reaction, let it get discarded, and play them. Like, if you does had, that like, count? Does that... like, if you had, let's say you had, yeah. um, or, or um, even, this is maybe Wing. a better, yeah, winging it, and other cards yeah. that you can't really get to the discard pile without playing them once, and you really just want to play them for your discard, another way to shuttle them there. So you just need to run another body slot card to get this out of play without defeating it? You can defeat it, you just don't trigger that reaction. Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah, it's optional. That's, that's optional to recover them. Yeah, that's true. So That's a little roundabout, but... Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little, little niche. That. <laughs> <laughs> a little niche, but, you know, like, putting two winging it's in there and then getting, like, in you know, one other card and getting six resources to then play the winging it's yeah, discard box. Really I good. feel like you just... Now that you have the pelts, you just don't put the pelt under here until you've discarded the winging it's. Like, you discard the winging it's, the hand size... <laughs> And then you put the pelts on this. Yeah. Well, that's if you run the pelts. <laughs> Who doesn't run the pelts? Yeah. It's like I mean, it's the new Delta Deep. I mean, everyone's going to run these pelts forever. I yeah. understand. <laughs> All right. So now we got... 28 card decks from here on in. <laughs> 26 after Temp Fate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now we got Mariner's Compass. Uh, this oh. was the Investigate Fire Axe. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, now a two cost, two XP asset with two mm -hmm. books. Um, so I believe this one's one cheaper. One cheaper and not fast. Yep. Uh, no. Spoilers. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Item tool, not fast. <laughs> um, as an action, you can exhaust Mariner's Compass to investigate. If you fail, ready Mariner's Compass. That's new. That is new. Oh. If you succeed like and have no resources in your resource pool, discover an additional clue. And then as a fast action during an investigation, using Mariner's Compass, spend a resource to get plus one book for the skill test. Limit three times mm -hmm. per investigation. I was at least hoping the book increase would be higher like fire axe true but, yeah 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 this is cool like uh again if i was doing a lot of investigative mariner's compass i would likely upgrade it it's pretty cool that it readies if you fail although uh, you mm. would still need to want mm. to use it multiple times yeah. yeah yeah i mean mariner's compass has always kind of been worse than fire axe yeah and yeah this doesn't this doesn't you save it. That, no. Yeah. But, you know, you probably put it as, like, a one of it's a, of course. That. It's a tool, at least. So at least I could see why, like, why now to print this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fire Axe is still... I'm still not like, a tool. No, I'm still not sure what, what the deal is with that. No, no, no I, don't, I just checked again. It's still not there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I missed that. Uh, survival Technique is a two-cost level two survivor asset. Uh, talent and Science Traded. Mm. Uh, slotless, because it's a talent. Uh, as a fast ability, you choose a card you own that is attached to your location and exhaust survival technique. Add that card to your hand. Uh, as another fast ability, during a skill test on a location or on a treachery attached to your location, exhaust survival technique, you get plus two skill value for this test. Hmm. Oh, so this, this takes Pitchfork back. Well, it puts it to your hand, though. That's not better. Oh, true. <laughs> oh, it does that at your hand. Oh, no. Yeah. It's not, it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't do the things I wanted it to do. It busts down locked doors real good. Because <laughs> treacheries that are attached to locations, you get plus two skill value when you exhaust this. That oh. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of scenarios or 
campaigns that have like a lot of treacheries attached to locations as sort of a thing. Oh, and not, uh, not uh, like Antarctica. Antarctica. Antarctica has mm. a lot of treacheries on locations. Oh, they do. Yeah. Those are yeah. Bunch of hazards. Um, do very many of them take skill tests to clear? A lot of them just go away at the end of the round. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but is it is yeah. it while you're resolving something on a treachery? Uh, during the skill tests on a treachery attached to a location. Oh, or or no, on no, a location. No. Oh, wait, yeah. during skill tests on a location. Okay, so that or, makes us pretty. That makes us find you'll find a lot of uses for that. Most scenarios yeah. have interesting. I okay. like this a lot with anyone that can take uh, level two survivor and seeker because shortcut uh, shortcut two. Yeah, bringing that back to hand after incredible <laughs> card to get to reuse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one downside being you have to be at its location to pick it back up with yeah. this. You can't have, like, moved on and then pick it back up from behind you. But. Yeah, but it's like, at least someone else could have used it this turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shortcut came to mind first, too. And Survivor is kind of the class of traps and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was they, trying to They, figure they out. even made a parallel Ashcan Pete this year that... Uh, and I'm, now I'm thinking that there's a little bit more explanation to... Well, I mean, actually, I think, if anything, this backs up my... Uh, the fact that this is here, and I think has Ash Can Pete on it, you can see Duke, right? Uh, my theory with the, at least the recent parallel cards is that they are... They were, like, real card ideas that didn't make it through playtesting or got cut for whatever reason, and the fact that this is here uh, kind of makes me think that once that was what Hank did, was, like, deal with the attached yeah, cards to locations mm -hmm. uh, or something like that. It is a science card, so Kate can yeah, put clues Kate on it. Yeah, Kate can run it and <laughs> Kate, put clues on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems fine. The mask is better. Like, the masks are better than most talents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I was, uh, I was just thinking, we're almost through the red cards and have not seen a mention of blesses, which was always a red thing, too, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, here's one, though. Yeah, keep faith. Uh, level two, zero cost, two will icons, fortune and blessed, fast. Play during any action window. Add four blessed tokens to the chaos bag. Okay, so it's free now. Yep. And uh, did it? Did the original keep faith get? It was played during your turn, right? Uh. No, I think it was the same. Oh, okay. Play during any so. free turn. So it's basically just free. Yep. Just. But it was two. Two before, less. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's the, that's not that's bad for yeah. two XP. For two XP, two less cost. Yeah, I would, I would, I would make that change. Yeah, it's a good. It's a, it's a classic. Spend some XP to reduce the cost upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but hey, we got a mention of blessings. <laughs> <laughs> Those who walk in faith need not fear the dark. Uh, Providential is how you say the name of this card, I think. Uh, it's a level two survivor skill with uh, a wild icon and then a will and combat. Mm. It's innate and blessed. If this skill test is successful, add a blessed token to the chaos bag for each damage or horror on you, whichever is less. Okay, Whoa, so you okay. want you like want to four and four. You want, yeah, you want to be Calvin. You want to be like maxed on both. It's a great Calvin card. Courage is your best defense against whatever horrors lurk beyond. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great Calvin card. It's like a little bit awkward with Hank because he has like low stats, so he's never gonna like you know put five with this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm not sure that it's a Hank card, but I I think it's a Calvin card. It's um. I don't know. There's probably someone else that can do the work. It's, it's uh, people who have seven and seven as their health yeah. and sanity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's it's two experience. I was gonna say it's as good icon wise as a guts or um, the combat one, overpower. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at, instead of draws a card, it adds a number of blessed tokens. Like that seems good to me. It is also two experience. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a solid card. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Ooh. <laughs> I've seen a lot of old cards in this, this set this drivers. Set, this set in general has had a lot of upgrades to older cards. Really? Yeah. I think every class has had a good handful. Huh. Yeah. This is Token of Faith. Uh, level three. Two cost. Uh, will and Book Icon. Item Charmed and Blast. Reaction. After a skill ten test ends in which one or more Curse or Auto Fail tokens were revealed, mm -hmm. Exhaust Token of Faith. Add that many Blast tokens to the bag. If this skill test failed, after resolving all effects from the failed test, the performing investigator may attempt that test again. Whoa. Whoa. I was like, so far, no change. <laughs> so I, I already love Token of Faith. It's just yeah. like one of, it's like my favorite blessed granting card just because yeah. it turns curses into having an upside. Yeah. And it's, I just find it really fun and satisfying. Uh, this seems incredible. I will, I will play the hell out of this card. Does this, it's like, 
not cancel the autofail, but like kind of cancels the autofail. I mean, yeah, you still, if it's a treachery or something, you still suffer the negative consequences, but you get to, it's kind of like try, try again. Yeah. It gives you another attempt. And on that attempt, there will be more blesses and less curses. Well, try, try again just right. pulls back the skill card. It doesn't give you the oh, action then, to do it again. There's a, there's one that's Live and learn. Learn. Live and learn. Live, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. An yeah, event that is similar to lucky, but rather than giving you plus two, it gives yeah. you another attempt yeah. with plus two. Yep, yep, yep. This is kind of like that on an exo- a free to exhaust yeah. accessory. It kind of makes me want to do like a blur Stella. Like I normally have not combined mm. Stella yeah. with blurs. Yeah, yeah but no, like great now you're like, oh, I get like I get to try it again, and I get the Stella action, and I get some bless tokens. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah, That's cool. That sold me. Yeah. I want to try that. Down. I don't think it would really... Well, yeah, it would not... You can't have Blur Stella because none of the red cards put curses in. So it would have to be someone else is putting the curses yeah. in. Uh, right. There's... Uh, Alongside... Temp Fate. That's true. I mean, Temp Fate should go in every deck ever, so... Uh, <laughs> Alongside a Rogue or Seeker. Uh, that wraps oh, up the oh, Survivor. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's a one of. One you one. hid that from me. Wow. Yeah. All right. Tell me about it. All right, uh, I was really excited when I when I saw this at the bottom because this is Dark Horse level five, Oof. one of my favorite cards. Um, so it, this is now a permanent mm. limit one per deck. Uh, during the upkeep phase, you may choose not to gain resources, and when you have no resources in your resource pool, you get plus one to all your stats. It's exactly the same, just permanent. Yep. Yes, I think that's good. Yep. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's exactly what Dark Horse needed. <laughs> And it only costs three if you had two pelts in your hand last game. Yes! <laughs> uh, sold. Oh, man. Uh, I think this is awesome. Yeah, the biggest weakness of Dark Horse has always been you have to draw it. <laughs> that and also the fact that you had to pay three. Like, sometimes, you it know... three? You, yeah. Oh, yeah, so three. it's like, you know, you're probably not playing as many economy cards in a Dark Horse deck. So, like, right. sometimes it was a little awkward to, yeah. to get up to three. Yeah, it seems great. This is going to be what some of the first five XP or what... Uh, Probably five of your first few XP you get in a Dark Horse deck is going to go to. Yeah, it's like yeah. we were talking about like spending two XP to save one action with Fire Axe, mm-hmm. but like this saves you the action of drawing it, the action of playing it, the action of getting three resources, um, and you don't have the unpredictability of when you draw it. Of when you draw yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is, you know, much more than just like one action per two XP. Like this is worth like three or four actions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this is a, a no-brainer if you're playing this style of deck. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, And it's uh, one of the very, very rare... Or Is it first ever? 5XP Survivor? No. Not they're... the first, but the, for a while there were none. For a while there's none yeah. of the three. Yeah. And then, uh, the... Deja Vu came out, which it... is the recalling yeah. e- exile cards. For oh, is, oh, is that a five? That's a five. Because okay. yeah. there was also the one that was like you get minus one then plus two. That was like it's a, a four. four. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was one of the first. Overs- it was the one with the great chess art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Yeah, that's kind of a surprise because it has nothing to do with anything, right? From what we've seen as, yeah. far, as far as the investigators, the cards, nothing. Yeah. Maybe but, just, you know. Yeah. They wanted that card to exist in the pool. They took the realm. Yeah. And then the helm and made it happen and there's i kind of just had the thought like yes there are a lot of upgrades to old cards here some of them are unsurprising because this is such a like uh insmith 1.5 of a set uh that that some of the insmith cards get new versions but it also like we were talking about this just being generally a really safe set they don't take any new big swings and that's part of what feels safe to me about it is like it's very safe to just make some upgrade versions of existing cards yeah yeah i think i think survivor had the highest quantity of old cards upgraded from I'm not sure that's true. I think Rogue had the fewest because uh, it was doing so much new parlay stuff, but I think the other ones all had a lot. Yeah, this is like this is like eight cards, I feel like. That wasn't eight. All right. It's uh, Fire Axe, Mariner's Compass, Keep Faith, Token of Faith. And, and of course, course five. five. Yeah, I think that's about what Guardian and Seeker had. Four or five, yeah. Uh, we're not done yet, though. We're not. We do have one neutral card that we've put onto this video, which is a twofer, right? I see you're holding a bonded card. It is a twofer. All right, tell us about it. All right, so we have the Broken Diadem, Crown of Dying Light. It's an asset, one cost, five experience. Ooh, okay. No Level joke five here. mask. Yeah. Uh, it is a wild icon, item, charm, and mask traded. 
limit one per deck, limit one mass per investigator, mm -hmm. as a reaction after a skill test at your location ends in which both a curse and a bless were revealed, place one resource on this card as an offering. Then, if there are three offerings on this card, search your bonded card for Twilight Diadem and swap it with this card, moving all offerings from this card to Twilight. This next card better be incredible. You, you said you need pairs of... Pairs, pairs of Bless and Curse to get this? Yeah. Wow. Both, both, three of them? Is it? Both it, that bless, has happened three times. Both yeah. Bless and Curse on three individual tests. Jeez. This next card better be unreal, because this is five experience... One cost and like lining up something pretty special to make this even trigger. So let's see what Twilight Dynam does. The cry crown of dying light, item, charm, mask, blessed traded. Mm -hmm. It's bonded, obviously. Limit one mask. As a reaction, when you reveal either a curse or blessed token during a skill test, spend one offering and exhaust this card. Treat the revealed token as an Elder Sign <laughs> token instead, <laughs> returning it to the Chaos Bag. Then, if this card has no offering, search your bonded card with the uh, previous card, swap it. Mm. Whoa. Okay, so it's uh, a lot like the Guardian card, the mm -hmm. like Miracle Wish, yeah. right? That has hoops to jump through to get you to, to get let you grant Elder Signs. And that one was, like, for every... It, it, as many blessings as you draw, you can play it, pay that many yeah. resources, and then you basically have a card that's, like, if you fail Elder Signs. This yeah. one is very easy to proc, I will say. Not not the first half, but the second half, yeah. unlike yes. that other card. Now, this one, is it... Do you have to draw the blessing curse, or is this anyone? <laughs> it's when you... Uh, sorry, yes, you need to. Ooh, when yeah. you reveal a bless or curse token... The front side is oh, after yeah. a skill test at your location oh, ends. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. But it has to be at your location. At your yeah, location. but it's still, it's a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the second half, oh, the so Elder Signs are only granted, it, can only it seems grant like, to you. To you. Oh, yeah. okay. But the second half is also the easier to trigger half, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lesser curse are going to happen all the time. Yeah. Seems like a no-brainer, and Hank, get that sweet plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but trigger it, trigger it early with Hank when you get that really yeah. great other sign ability. Uh, I like, even though this is neutral, I've got to think of these new investigators. Kohaku is going to be the one most interested in this. So I'm yeah. curious what his elder sign does because I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it, I hope it's something you want to trigger a few times. <laughs> yeah, I always think of uh, Mateo and Silas and. You know, some of those other strong Elder Signs for, for then, opportunities. I mean, Jacqueline yeah. can trigger it a little bit easier. That's true. Um, and anyone with Olive. Is um, Jacqueline's Elder Sign effect interesting, though? What is it? I don't remember. I don't know either. Yeah. So many Elder Sign effects are forgettable. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, does it just ready her ability or something like that? Does mm. she use her ability again that round? Or mm, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's yeah. Let, right. let us know in the comments what Jackson's other side is. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it does. It has to be someone who can pull this off and who uh, will then get a benefit that's worth it from triggering their elder sign a few times. Uh, also, it comes at the trade off of you can't use a regular mask, which are incredible cards. <laughs> They're very good cards. They're so, very good cards. I I don't know if I'm actually sold on this being an actual good card, but I love I love the cards that have a side quest. You guys, yeah. Do, this so. is this is a crazy side quest, and I like it a lot. I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. And it does. I remember getting those pairs was really tough in Innsmouth, but I feel like there's this cycle is introducing more ways to like throw stuff back in. So. We mm, just start yeah. running Favor of Sun and Moon in your decks, and you can sure. always Honestly. make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Just slot those in next to your Temp Fates. Yeah. There you go. I mean, one Temp Fate is all you need. Yeah. To get three, three <laughs> less than three yeah. cards. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what a combo. Wow. Yeah. One Temp Fate plus this card. It'll always work. <laughs> yeah. You hear it here first. <laughs> okay. So, final thoughts on Survivor in that Mock Veil. I think that... Uh, other than having there being a lot of upgraded cards. We covered that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that Hank is, like, my favorite of the new investigators so far. Like, I I love that he swap a ruse. Um, That's cool. The... Yeah, I don't... I feel like we didn't spend enough time appreciating that. <laughs> the, the, like, he switches to a completely different investigator. <laughs> There's been nothing else like that, right? Yeah, that is cool. Um, there was, uh, did you guys play Netrunner long enough to get to the flip IDs? Uh, yes. Yeah, like, yeah. those are really cool. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, they didn't work quite like this, but, 
Yeah, yeah. I think it's Hank, Hank is really interesting. It's I'm I'm torn both because I feel like uh, being good at taking damage in horror kind of isn't enough to be exciting. But also, I'm a player who plays like tank and support characters in all different games, so I'm maybe I'm really, really excited about it. I he, like can't decide. He kind of reminds me of Monterey Jack, where I'm like his ability is good but boring. Yeah, is the is the, like. His abilities are take damage for other people, draw cards, or gain resources, which is, like, the basics of the basics of this game. So I'm, like, I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm excited to play him, but I think he's good. He's, like, a... a, He has a a complicated way of doing something that's ultimately very fundamental. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And he's a six in a stat. Yeah. the first six ever investigator. That is exciting. That is exciting. That is exciting. That is exciting. Right? No, you Calvin get, at, at you base him, uh, five. Give him a tarot card. Well, well yeah, tarot. but I'm saying he <laughs> alone. He he just turns into. I have a six now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All you need to make him base six is just five. Is trauma. take ten damage. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a base six. Uh, I think, unfortunately, the uh, rules are still he's oh, he insane dies? or physically uh, Yeah, I didn't the, think about that. I guess five, five of either kind of trauma, he would be retired. He'd be retired yeah. because oh. there's no window to trigger his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a funny idea, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, so don't do uh, five trauma. He will not start at six. Oh. He will be gone forever. <laughs> four horror, four trauma, four in trauma. Carcosa... First, first, first action has to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. You solved it. Yes, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> oh man. Um, wow. I, I think the most exciting card is pelt shipment. <laughs> both, both yeah. because it's it's always fun to have more um, campaign affecting cards, whether they're extra experience or or uh, they find another way to do it. But and then just its little uh, situation of like, do I want to have it in hand? Do I need to find a way to discard it and then get it back later? All that it's it's fun to deal with. It is. And then, um, yeah, all it really does is has a couple familiar feeling ways to throw blesses in the bag as far as how it plays into Bless and Curse. So I hope that uh, Purple has the payoff for that because we haven't we seen a lot payoff, of we yeah. haven't seen a lot of cards that are like, oh my god, it does what if, when it comes to Curse and Bless stuff. Yeah, I feel like I do need to have the knowledge of Ben Smith to be like, why is Curse and Bless even good? Yeah, yeah, I don't think uh, yeah, I think if you owned this in the core set, uh, this would be. Still interesting that it's throwing tokens in the bag that affect later tests, <laughs> yeah. but it would not be the kind of cool package that we had in Innsmouth. So we got one, sure. one more video worth of cards. Uh, speaking of which, you choose which class we do next, Steven. Mm, I guess if you twist my arm, I'll say Mystic. <laughs> that's, that's generous of you. That's yeah, it is, it very is, I am excited for it. Like, I'm surprised you didn't go with the other one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now that we were talking about... Uh, Taking big, uh, taking big swings this late in the game, like give us a sixth faction. That's <laughs> now that would be very interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> None of the other investigators would be able to splash those cards. No. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you, gents. This has been fun. Uh, four down, one to go. Like the video if you haven't, and join us to surely see all the incredible bless and curse cards. I'm ready in Mystic. Next time. Till then, be optimal. Thank <laughs> you.